from you, Kathy. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Just wake me up when it's over. <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 hilarious Big Bang Theory bloopers. Their experiment on K on Decay supported our something. <laughs> Their experiment on K on Decay supported our, I don't remember the word. For this list, we'll be looking at all the times the amazing cast messed up, couldn't remember their lines, and couldn't keep a straight face. Which of these flubs still has you LOLing? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Bite Me The continuity police might have had a problem with the casting of Kathy Bates as Amy's mother in the later seasons, after having a different actor play the part in season 4. But that aside, Bates is a great actor, and we were sure happy to see her show up on the show. Her status as an acting icon doesn't mean she's immune from messing up her lines every now and then, however, or outright forgetting them. Keeping that attitude and action. And she never joins us for Sunday dinners. <laughs> I know what it is! To the sweet delight of Jim Parsons, in fact, who follows up one of Bates's misses with a hit of his own. I always dreamed of working with Kathy Bates. <laughs> <laughs> and Bates hits right back. Fight me! <laughs> Number 19. Hello, Ramona. After Ramona Nowitzki fails at her attempt to steal Sheldon away from Amy, Raj decides to give her another chance to go out with him, an opportunity she already rejected the episode prior. I will not ask again. I sincerely hope not. <laughs> Very well. I'm going to leave before this gets awkward. While the actual rejection scene is quite funny, the actors needed a few takes to get it right. The first time wasn't the fault of anyone in the scene. Instead, the blame goes to someone off camera. Hello, Ramona. <laughs> <laughs> the second time, though, that one's on Kunal Nair, who made an unfortunate but quite funny acting choice in delivering his line. It's made even funnier when he's the one that calls himself out on it. Hello, Ramona. <laughs> so, so bad. <laughs> Number 18. Report? Letter? Paper? One of the biggest moments of the series happens when two scientists from Fermilab prove Sheldon and Amy's theory of super asymmetry. We've been working with Kaons, and our data made absolutely no sense. A few weeks ago, someone told us about your paper, and we realized that our failed experiment confirmed your theory. The confirmation puts Shamie on a path to a Nobel Prize, and it also leads actor Sean Astin down the road of a great blooper. We've been working with Kaons, and our data meant absolutely nothing to us. Yeah, a few weeks ago, someone sent us your, uh, it's a report? <laughs> it is. I don't know. Your paper. It's a paper. In the scene, Dr. Pemberton and Dr. Campbell are explaining to Sheldon and Amy how their paper helped make sense out of their work that appeared to be a total failure. And paper is a key word here, because it's also the word that Aston just can't seem to remember. We've been working with Kaons, and our data was completely useless. A few weeks ago, someone sent us your letter or report. <laughs> <laughs> Number 17. Whose line is it anyway? Knowing your lines is an important part of being an actor, but maybe just as important is knowing when to say those lines. In this great blooper from season 12, it's that second thing that both Johnny Galecki and Mayim Bialik have problems with. It would be nice to read some of the thank you notes. <laughs> I don't know whose line it is. Is it me? Oh, sorry. Jim Parsons sets both of them up perfectly with his lines, but first Galecki and then Bialik appear to be waiting for someone else to speak when it's in fact their turn to do so. Well, I always say, a stranger's just a friend who hasn't complimented me yet. <laughs> Your turn. Am I supposed to say something? <laughs> for those wanting to blame the temporary memory loss on the champagne they're drinking, Galecki bursts that bubble as well. It's not even real champagne. <laughs> Can't even use that excuse. Number 16. Something about K on Decay. Do you ever watch The Big Bang Theory and wonder in amazement how Jim Parsons is able to remember all of Sheldon's lengthy monologues and technical jargon? Wait, what? <laughs> Their experiment on K on Decay supported our predictions on the higher order corrections pertaining to super asymmetry. Wait, what? Well, the truth is, sometimes he doesn't as is the case with this wonderful blooper from the final season, where Sheldon tells the group about how their theory was just proven correct by the guys at Fermilab. Given the length of some of Sheldon's diatribes, this one sentence should be a piece of cake for Parsons. 
but as you'll see here, it hysterically is not. Their prediction, oh, nope. <laughs> Their experiment on K on Decay supported our predictions on the higher, higher, their, ex okay. He doesn't give up though. Oh, please. <laughs> keep you all night if I have to. <laughs> Number 15, the third time isn't the charm. So you've been using Sheldon as an excuse to get out of seeing your mother? Try saying, so you've been using Sheldon five times fast. Actually, just try saying it one time properly. It sure doesn't feel like a tongue twister, right? But unfortunately for Kaylee Cuoco, on the day they filmed this episode, that's exactly what it was. So you've been using, sorry. Right from there, right from oh. there. Here we go, and action. <laughs> So you've been using- <laughs> <laughs> This rather simple sentence didn't just trip her up once or twice either. Kuoko proved herself the exception to the third times the charm rule as well on that day. To her complete befuddlement, as well as those of her cracking up co-stars in the scene. So you've been using- Oh my wow. god! <laughs> Number 14, Harder. We should start by saying that it's almost never okay to hit someone. But if it's for a scene and one has proper consent, we guess it's okay. Such was the case with the violence laid on Johnny Galecki by Melissa Rausch in The Scavenger Vortex. In the scene that made it to air, you can see that Rausch gives Galecki a nice punch right to his chest. Hey, Penny, I just wanted to say good luck, and I hope there's no hard feelings. Hey, Romeo, repair your relationship on your own time! But to get to that level of strength, she had to work her way up through a few preliminary takes. Good luck, and I hope there's no hard feelings. Hey, She started with an open hand push, which led to the direction to go harder the next time. Romeo, repair your relationship on your own time! <laughs> oh, in the face. <laughs> Number 13, Sheldon, stop laughing. Everyone knows that the secret to acting is reacting. So when the actor across from you is laughing, it makes it that much more difficult to deliver your serious lines without also cracking up which is what happened to Kunal Nair in this scene with Jim Parsons and Mayim Bialik. Parsons might be off camera, but his breaking leads to Nair being unable to get his line out. Thank you, Rajesh. And Amy, you need to be patient. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> I wasn't even no, looking at you. To be fair, the wonderful way Nair delivers the line, we can't keep a straight face either. And thankfully, we're not supposed to. Thank you, Rajesh. And Amy, why are you laughing? <laughs> Number 12, too angry to talk. In season seven, when Penny and Leonard are dog sitting and they accidentally allow Cinnamon to eat a bunch of chocolate, Raj is pissed. Oh my God, Cinnamon, are you okay? Well, I can't believe you do. You do whatever it takes to save her life. If she needs new organs, I'll buy any dog necessary and scrap them for parts. We've all been there. Something happens to make you so angry that you can't even put your words together properly to express how irritated you are. Oh my God, Cinnamon, are you okay? What is, can't believe you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this scene, Kunal Nair really got himself into the mindset of his character. So much so that for at least a couple takes, he had a very hard time putting Raj's words together in any kind of coherent way. Oh my God, Cinnamon, are you okay? Well, I can't believe you do. You do whatever it takes to save her life. If she needs new organs, I'll bite down and... <laughs> Number 11, isn't it Bitcoin? In season 11, the guys remember that they'd mined a bunch of Bitcoin years ago and spend an entire episode retracing their steps in the hopes of finding said Bitcoin and striking it rich. Where the cryptocurrency is now and all the steps it takes to figure that out are super fun, but unimportant to this great blooper. Hi. Hey, what are you guys doing? Uh, we have a bunch of Bitcoin and an old laptop and it could be worth like, a lot of money. The only important thing to remember here is that the currency is called Bitcoin, not, well, not what Kunal Nayir accidentally calls it in a very funny slip of the tongue. Hi. Hey, what are you guys doing? Uh, we have a bunch of Bitcoin on our old... <laughs> Number 10, Raj and the Pickle. When the guys went to the North Pole, there were two big things that happened. So we slept together naked. <laughs> it was only to keep our core body temperatures from plummeting. First, Leonard, Raj, and Howard faked the results of Sheldon's experiment so as to make him stop being such a, to put it nicely, dictator. And second, the night the heat went out and they all slept together naked. 
And although they agreed to never speak of it again, Raj mentions it once more over lunch in the cafeteria. Well, we'll always have the night the heat went out. However, in one of the takes that didn't make it to air, Kunal Nair follows up his line with a way too intimate moment with a pickle. We'll always have the night the heat went out. The best part is that, based on his reaction, it really looks like it was unintentionally sexual, which makes it even funnier, don't you think? Number 9. Johnny Woke Up Early There are two parts to a blooper. There's the mess up itself, and then there's the reaction to said mess up. Hey, want some French toast? It's oatmeal day. <laughs> I tell you what, next French toast day, I will make you oatmeal. Dear Lord, are you still going to be here on French Toast Day? And in the case of this one on our list, it's the latter that makes this one so good. In the scene, Penny is making French toast while Sheldon is informing her that it's oatmeal day. Morning. Look, Leonard, Penny made French toast. Sorry, I haven't given her your schedule yet. It's an iCal download. She can put it right in her phone. Leonard is supposed to walk in after they get through their interaction. However, in this outtake, Johnny Galecki walks in before he's supposed to, which gets a hello, Johnny, from actress Kaylee Kawoko. French toast? It's oatmeal day. Hi, Johnny. <laughs> I woke up a little early this morning. <laughs> this is fun, but it's Johnny's explaining the reason for his premature entrance that gets the biggest laugh from us. Number eight, crappy cars. Okay, everybody, who's ready for eight? <laughs> Sometimes it isn't the actor's fault when a scene goes wrong. Sometimes it's the props, as was the case with two different car props during the filming of the great season 7 episode, The Scavenger Vortex. As teams of two scour the city of Pasadena for clues, they usually go from one location to another in cars. But before they go anywhere, they have to put on their seatbelts. Safety first. To the planetarium! Let's go! To the tar pits! Let's go! This is usually a pretty simple task, but not always. To the planetarium! Let's go! <laughs> and while Jim Parsons and Kuoko give up pretty easy, Galecki and Melissa Rausch give those seatbelts everything they have. To the tar pits! Let's go! Number seven, Al Pacino. Mother, is that you? <laughs> Your little boy is coming home. Actor Simon Helberg, who plays Howard Wallowitz, does some great impressions, and his skills are put on full display when he's the dungeon master for a game of Dungeons and Dragons. While Nick Cage and Christopher Walken also make appearances, in this particular scene, it's Al Pacino that takes over when Howard tells the girls they can join the game. Fungus that looks suspiciously like Al Pacino rises <laughs> from the forest floor and says, you're playing D&D, you're playing D&D, this whole apartment! In fact, he takes over so well that Simon just can't make it through the speech before cracking himself and the rest of the gang up. You can see in the version that made it to air that he doesn't pause quite as long before getting that last line in there. You're playing D&D. &D. You're playing D&D. &D. This whole apartment is playing D&D. &D. <laughs> Number six, not easy to lift. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard and Penny's first wedding wasn't exactly the joyous event that many fans had hoped for. Not only did they run off and get married in Vegas without any of their friends, but also on the way there, Leonard admitted to having kissed another girl a couple years back while they were together. You promise you're okay with everything from the car. Oh my god, would you stop bringing it up? Yeah, you're sorry, I'm right. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Upon their return to Pasadena, the couple angrily go to their separate apartments. Or at least they're supposed to be angry, especially after Leonard insults her. I may not have been entirely faithful, but you, you are not easy to lift. But in this outtake, Kaylee Cuoco wasn't able to make it into the apartment without laughing. I may not have been entirely faithful, but you, you are not easy to lift. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. 
Number five, putting VapoRub on Amy. You wanna rub something on my chest? <laughs> yes, all over it. In the season six episode, The Fish Guts Displacement, Amy gets sick and Sheldon takes care of her by, among other things, rubbing VapoRub on her chest. While the act is purely practical, for Amy, it has more sensual undertones as her reaction makes pretty obvious. However, you might have also noticed that the scene cuts away pretty quickly. You may notice some tingling. <laughs> oh, I'm counting on it. <laughs> One of the reasons for that may be because Jim Parsons and Mayim Bialik had some problems getting through it with straight faces. In this great outtake, you can see Bialik winking at Parsons, who tries, at first, to avoid eye contact so as not to crack up. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Number four, Indiana Jones' love child. I was thinking of dressing up as Indiana Jones' mocha-skinned love child. <laughs> Indian Jones. Try saying that five times fast. Or in the case of Kunal Nair, just try saying it once correctly. I was thinking as dressing up as Indiana Jones's <clears throat> right from there. <clears throat> I was thinking as dressing up as India Jones's Indiana Jones. I'm sorry, guys. And that's only once they can get past the opening line of the scene about the fedora without Parsons or Helberg cracking up. We don't know how many takes it took to get through this entire thing, but we're glad they finally did because we have to admit it's a funny line. I was thinking as dress as there's no as. <laughs> I was thinking of dressing up as India, India. And it made for a great blooper as well, so two birds. I was thinking of dressing up as Indiana Jones's mocha skinned love child, Indian Jones. <laughs> I have to say that again, don't I? Number three, I love science. Agree to disagree. <laughs> That's what I love about science. There's no one right answer. Penny's ex-boyfriend, Zach, was the good-looking, kind-hearted, but not-too-bright guy that Penny often rebounded back to between her various breakups from Leonard. You know, I saw this great thing on the Discovery Channel. Turns out that if you kill a starfish, it'll just come back to life. <laughs> was the starfish wearing boxer shorts? Because you might have been watching Nickelodeon. And over the years, we came to expect Zach's mistakes when it came to science and his understanding of it. But not all mistakes are created equal, as this outtake makes evident. Well, we won't bore you with the details. Are you kidding? I love science. Einstein, Stephen Hawking, Mike deGrasse Tyson. You see, in this scene, Zach is supposed to mess up Neil deGrasse Tyson's name, but actor Brian Thomas Smith messes it up wrong. It's still very funny, but not how the writers wanted it to be. Einstein, Stephen Hawking, Mike deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> Number two, Raj and Howard singing. When Raj and Howard form their band Footprints on the Moon to perform at the comic book store, the first song they write together is the funny and very catchy Thor and Dr. Jones. Thor's hammer miss. It was Avenger versus archaeologist. And although we love it, their friends aren't as fond of it, as you can see by their unimpressed looks during and after the guy's performance. In this musical outtake, Howard and Raj try to add some high-pitched harmonies to the performance. One plays the lightning, the other plays the <laughs> And while no one can keep it together for that version, you can catch a shot of Penny laughing even during the performance that made it into the show. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, spanking. Grab my knee, let's begin. Oh my. In the original script, Sheldon spanking Amy was supposed to be done off camera, with the scene cutting away to shots of the monkey in her apartment. However, that was eventually changed and the punishment was moved on screen. Excuse me, you're not supposed to be enjoying this. <laughs> then maybe you should spank me harder. 
maybe I will. Spankings can cause different emotions and feelings, but let's be honest here, laughter is usually not one of them, unless you're Jim Parsons and Mayim Bialik. Oh my. <laughs> As Parsons said, quote, It was one of the hardest things we ever had to do because I found it tremendously amusing. As you can see from these amazing bloopers. Oh my. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Action? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.